you know, a little light, but, um, you know, people were nice for the most part, being humane, not like some of the stories you see online. Right. Is it, I mean, is the city, are the city streets like just? Um, I've never, it's, last time I seen the city streets like that was uh, at the Sandy. They're oh. pretty bare. Um, the MTA is free. There's very few people on the roads. You know, I'm a, technically an essential worker, so I do have to be at work. What usually takes me 45 minutes to an hour, I'm at work in 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's intense. It's, you know, it, those of you who don't know me personally, um, this doesn't really affect my everyday life all that much yet, just because I work remote 100% of the time anyway. So for me, I didn't have to make any adjustments. Um, the adjustment I'm making is my wife is also home working remote full time. So um, doesn't affect the podcast. We are in a quarantine in case, for those of you coming out of a coma. Um, and we are currently without a baseball season, which is probably the biggest yeah. thing. So the we have a lot. To to dis- yeah, we have a lot to discuss, though, because there's a lot of angles here. So what we're going to discuss is what we know about the 2020 season as of right now, what we think is going to happen. We'll discuss all the angles that it did happen. We'll discuss all the angles of it doesn't happen. So basically, stay with us. We're going to talk all baseball. None of you have had any sort of baseball chatter worth a shit for the past week. So this is your chance to get your fill. Yeah. We want you interacting. Bring in your the asses in the group. Yeah, we want group interaction because when we start talking about these topics, we want to know what you guys think, what your ideas are, and and we'll refer to them whenever we can. But this is basically an open discussion for the next hour um, about baseball. So it's what everyone wants. Um, let's yeah, we have no real format here, guys. So it's whatever you want. Um, everyone's bored, like Vince said. We need something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, and and for daily life, you will get a quarantine update later. Um, so let's get into it here. We, as of right now, baseball technically is only canceled, what, through mid-May? Is that the latest update? Um, it is May. I don't think there was a date on it. I think it was just the second week of May. Um, Right, second week of May. I don't, I don't see how that's going to happen. Right, so basically we, we can, we are assured the first seven weeks of the season are gone. Um, and now we have to start thinking about, is there going to be any season at all? Now, I... We'll kick this off with, I've done a a lot of number research today. While you were doing, you know, actual accounting, I was wasting time doing this. So I will give you the scenarios and then we can kind of discuss them. Um, But before we get into that, do you think, gun to your head right now, do you think there's going to be a baseball season? Um, I think we're looking at somewhere between 80 and 100 games. Okay. Yeah. So that's a good point. Let's agree on this and tell me if you don't agree. I think in order for there to be a legitimate baseball season and there has to be a legitimate baseball season because the last three seasons of champions now all have some sort of asterisk with them. Mm -hmm. We need a legitimate champion in 2020. And I think it has to be at least half a season, 81 games for, uh, for that to happen. Do you think that's a fair number where you're not like, well, you know, they won, but not really. I think my, my go-to number was half a season. Um, Yeah. Preferably 100 games. I think 100 games is a nice round number. Um, You know, it's enough where you get fatigue and all those other things that play a part into the long season. But I think 100 games is really the main target, half a season, you know. But let's be real, we'll take any baseball. Good, yeah. Without discussing it, that's the – those are the exact ideas that came into my head. You have to have at least 81 games for it to be worth it. Otherwise, I would just cancel it. And – ideally you get about a hundred games. And I think that's both realistic and also like a solid number you want. So getting into the math behind that now, this is what I know. And we'll use the Yankees schedule as an example, because that's the Intel that I have. If the season started July 1st, and let's preface this by saying, I think you need two weeks of spring training games, which probably means three weeks of, reporting to the facility for spring before you can start opening day you think that's a that's about right I, right I don't know I don't know if two weeks is enough for pitchers I mean for the position players I think two weeks is more than enough it's the pitchers I'd worry about I have to figure though they they have to be in some capacity staying loose and training right now <laughs> even if it's like in their you, home you know what though it's not the same it's it, not you know, even now I was reading something about um the state of Florida is about to have a shutdown where 
that would directly affect the Yankees and, and teams that are in Florida, you know, preparing a spring training and, and kind of spending their time there. So, you know, those teams where they're going to get baseball activities at. To play devil's advocate there, though, they don't need to be prepped for a full season. <laughs> so I don't know how that works. You know, you this could... is true. Um, you still want to stretch your, your arm out. You still want to be able to go 100 pitches, you know, six innings or more. Right. You know, whether you play half a season or not, you still, you know, your starts are your starts. You may yeah. not be starting 30 plus games, but, you know, you want to be able to throw 100 pitches in a game and, you know, something like that. You're talking about maybe guys three, four starts in, not throwing 100 pitches. I don't, I don't know. It's these uncharted waters. Yeah. Well, let's say hypothetically, then we'll, we'll give it a little wiggle room. I think if this, if they don't open facilities again by June 1st, you're probably screwed because yeah, probably you need about that month for everything to start. <laughs> um, maybe you can push it to mid June. And I'd say that's the cutoff because July for this is what happens if you start July 1st. If you start July 1st on the Yankee schedule, there's 76 games left from that point on. But no, if you, you would obviously eliminate All-Star Weekend, which is shortly after July 1st. It's like the following week because there wouldn't be an All-Star Game or Home Run Derby in a condensed schedule. You need that time, in my mind. Right. So if you keep one of those off days between July 1st and when games resume July 16th, um, it frees up six extra game dates. So now we're up to 82 games, which already meets our minimum of having to get to 81 games. So July, July 1st is already a solid number that where mm -hmm. it can happen. August 24th, August 27th, and September 3rd towards the end of the season are all off days within less than two weeks of each other. So if you eliminate 827 and keep the other two, which are surrounded by longer home, longer home and road stands, um, you're up to 83 games. That adds one more game. The season as of right now ends September 27th. The World Series pre-coronavirus pre was set for 1020 to begin 1020. So in my I mind, I already hated <laughs> it. It would have ended 1028 at the latest, as is designed now, the entire season. Game seven of the World Series would be October 28th. Um, we saw with 9-11, they're willing to play into November if necessary. And I think that we'd have to do that again. So if you back the season up one week, you're backing it up to 11-4 would be game seven if the World Series went seven games. Um, and you add in one extra off day since you're extending the season by the end of the week, you're freeing up six more games. So now we're up to 89 um, if the season started July 1st instead of the original 76. And if you wanted to, you can add one doubleheader a month. And the reason I'm choosing one a month is there's three series on the Yankees calendar that's already a two-game series. So if you just combine those games into one day, mm -hmm. then you're freeing up uh, those additional games plus the Legends game in Iowa, probably going to be canceled just for logistics sake. That's a fourth one. So you're talking at that point like 93 games you can then make happen with July 1st. Um, maximum 95 if you really push it. So what do you think of that? <laughs> That's a lot to digest. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of math. Um, um, I, I, I'm not a fan of a lot of doubleheaders. Um, Those would be it four, basically. It, it depends on, you know, where they are before and where they are after, you know, each team. You know, you're right. talking about a doubleheader and then you're flying across country. That's kind of sucky. Um, the other thing you have to keep in mind is is actual rainouts. You know, yeah. April and May, you that miss too. April and May is when most of them happen, so you don't have to worry about that. But there are going to be rainouts, um, um, so you kind of like. Too. I don't like November baseball. I hate it. I hate it. I hate yeah, it. but would you rather if you have a team? If you have a team in the East Coast, um, you know, we, we saw it with Tampa Bay. What was that? Two thousand and eight. Eight. What the suspended game? that's when uh, they ended up playing in snow and, and oh. Philly. I, I, I think all things even, you know, they beat Philly in that series. Um, I just, I'm not a fan of, of November baseball. These guys play most of the season in the summer in a warm element to see, you know, cold breath and, and scarves and hats and, and wool gloves being worn. It's just, I mean, if I have to take it, I'm going to take it. Of course. But. I mean, that's where we're at. <laughs> we got to make some concessions here. I mean, we could just do some radical shit and just throw the whole 
season out the window and just have a tournament style. Just come no. up with some funky shit. Have fun. It doesn't count as a champion, as an official MLB championship, but have some fun. Players Union will be down with it. Just have a tournament. Every team is in the tournament. One through 16, one through the, no, one through 15, because there are 30 teams. You use last year's records and you, and you have some NCAA style tournament going. You're going to pay something them. so radical. Are you going to pay them their whole year salary for that tournament? Like, how does that work? I, it, I, if the players are going to play, they're going to want as many games as possible, I would think. I don't know the legalese of the contracts. I would think that the players still get paid. Um, and it doesn't matter really because I'm sure the owners get their money on insurance claims. Right. Um, you know, it would suck if you hold the guy that's going into his 30, 31 season and he's going to be a free agent to hold him back a whole nother year. You're costing him a lot of money. And yeah. And so we're, we're already getting some good feedback here in the comment section. One thing Asim had mentioned earlier, and we're going to get to it is, um, talking about kind of further ramifications we're not discussing that aren't schedule related right now. He talked about expanding rosters. I have ideas for that. Um, we're getting a lot of neutral sites. Same should have paid attention to earlier Dong cities. I'm sure we touched on that. <laughs> we have um, neutral sites. Uh, Miami's been thrown out there by Andrew Sullivan. Brian, of course, would saying that November baseball is good in some places, which is true. So choosing a neutral site would make sense. Uh, so we LA got fans got to get over it. Like, Angels fans got over making the World Series. Yeah. The <laughs> hey, they'll host it there. Um, <laughs> Mike Trout could broadcast it with, with Joe Buck. There you go. But um, You can have Mike Trout on Dong City. Here's my thoughts on this. I don't love neutral site locations. I think that if you're going to play a season – you have earned the right to have your home fans there. So that's my yeah. problem. My the problem crowd with, is a part of it. My problem with a tournament is that it doesn't make sense logistically because of the reasons you said earlier, mostly with pitching, because then you have, you're either going with like a three man rotation or you're spreading out these games so far, they're in a regular season anyway. Look, take a page out of the Caribbean World Series. Use that tournament style. Trust me, it works. I don't want to see that's not genuine to me because yeah, they, you is. have – all everything has to be adjusted. Like people should be punished for having a week fourth or fifth. Well, it, it would, like I said, it would be a different type of MLB season. You know, it wouldn't be a traditional season. It would be a way to get fans baseball, have something completely different. Again, it'll never happen. This is just me throwing something completely. This is what you want to see, not what you think. I would be. love something. So look, let's be real. Is, is Manfred and his group of like boomers ever going to do it? <laughs> no, those guys are they, they don't know how to market the league. They don't know how to have any type of technology. They don't know how to make any advancements. So it's not going to happen. I'm just saying as a fan who's relatively young, I'm still in my 30s, give me something funky. Okay. Market the game. I would like, I would like to just make a, a 80 to 95 game season happen instead. That to me at least would fulfill my, my gratification of having a World Series champion. I take it, but if we can't have a, re a regular season, have fun with it, man. So are you saying uh, – now I'm curious. If this clears up, say, mid-August, you're just like, I just want a, like a WBC-style tournament just Absolutely. so we have something Absolutely. that I can agree with. If there's not going to be real baseball, give no, me no, look, something. Real baseball, real baseball is always a preference. Yeah. I mean, baseball life. Come on. Yeah. But – you know, um, give me real baseball. If you can't give me real baseball, give me fun baseball. Yeah, that's fair. You, and I can agree. You, you want to you wanna catch new fans, I guarantee you a tournament style, um, you know, Tony style championship would bring a shitload of new fans, young fans. Like, oh, this is cool. You know, not the best team won't guaranteed win, you know. And, and it'll be fun. You'll have some, you know, maybe the Pirates will actually make a little noise, you know. We know they won't, but it'd be fun to think they can. I considered a March Madness with like, um, instead of individual games, you just have a series. It's like a round yeah. robin tournament, basically. Caribbean World Series or the World Baseball yeah, Classic. Yeah. They're round robin. That would be cool. That would be cool in lieu of a season. See, but the, more you, the more you think about it, the more you're liking it. 
I no, I like the concept. My problem is that I want an actual season instead. Oh, of course, that's the preference. Oh. But let's we could have fun with it too. Yeah. So now let's let's go back to that though. So if you were to have an actual season, you know, games played, we're not in a tournament style. You've got the five man rotations and whatnot. Back to a seems original point. Um, the first thing I'm thinking as far as n- now we're going to discuss rules, you know, how would rules have to be changed for this season only? And uh, the first thing that comes to mind, I think you have to carry 27 men on the roster. It's going to be 26 anyway this season. I think you have to up that one more to 27. Reason being you've got consolidated games, less off days. Uh, you're going to need those extra roster spots. to keep. I think you running. can go more than one more. I think you can go maybe 30. All right, so you're I, gonna, I you're three. gonna need you're gonna need a lot of players if you're playing double headers, if you're you know stretching players thin, you're gonna need you know they're gonna need more pitchers. Well, double headers, you would still keep that one that plus one rule, so that'd go up to twenty eight, and yeah. then I think in September you go up to thirty. I say thirty, thirty all year round. Okay, now now here's the ramification to that. How do you work pre arb? in our this year <laughs> like if you call up a player and he's part of that 30-man roster you would have to prorate it you'd have to pro everything would have to be prorated if you call him up to be part of that 30-man roster it counts prorated is a good idea i had suspending su- the super two arb clock in general for 20 for 20 that'll seasons. never happen the owners would never let that happen if it's just the super twos though like i get you know you have to ask the chris bryant the owners would never let it happen I mean, there's got to be a give and take here, though. Because you, you got to remember, it, it's not just one year salary you're talking. If you are, let's, let's use Chris Bryant. If you're a guy who's consistently getting better, your ARB number changes every single year. So it's just not gaining an extra year of free agency. It's your ARB number changing and going up every year. So it, it could he, potentially be a lot of money. He, But that's ARB, though. I'm talking pre-ARB in order to decide how many years you have left on your deal. Like Chris Bryant, you know. know. So here's the thing. It it all flows, though, because if you start your clock early, your ARB years are sooner. Right. So they they all play into one another. Well, and force teams just not call up some stud minor leaguer this year. And that would suck. And we'd have another, you know, fan base arguing. Like, imagine if the Mets didn't bring up Peter Alonso after the spring he had last year. Yeah. And the kid went out to show that he he, he belonged in the league. Right. He he belonged in the league. He was killing it. Imagine yeah. they held him down to get an extra year of eligibility. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it, it's already an issue, though, that's going to have to be negotiated after 2021 anyway. Yeah, that's another thing. You, you, they're not going to give up an extra that extra year. Well, if you're not willing to do that, I, I don't mind the prorated aspect. Yeah, I think you'd have to have it prorated. Um, and I think you have to prorate pay them as well. So, you know, guys like Stanton are going to make his $24 million or whatever for playing however many. Because mm-hmm. the games are still as meaningful. Like, in this case, 90 games in a regular season is as meaningful as 162. It's still going to decide the division. Right. It's still going to decide playoff teams. still going to decide the home field advantage. So you have to pay them accordingly. I don't see any way around that. Yeah, you, you got it. But, again, I don't think that's an issue because they're going to get played and the player, the owners are going to get paid from the insurance companies anyway. Yeah, but they're going to lose all their revenue from April, May, and June. They'll they'll file a claim for that too. Does that is that how it works? You would know yeah, that better than me. Yeah, yeah, they have insurance for all of that. Okay, loss of business insurance. That's fine. If insurance companies are the only uh, victim here, I'm perfectly fine with going <laughs> that way. That's not a problem. For now that what their rates would be in the following seasons, uh, you know. It, yeah. I'm sure they'd pay, they'd pay for it, but it's worth it. Yeah. Um, so going along with that thought, uh, I think you have to – I think an obvious one is you have to go – you have to keep the 10-day IL because they were going to move yeah. it back to 15. Now you got to move it back to 10 and keep it for this year, and you can implement that in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, player contracts – yeah, well, so if we're not going that angle, then there's no uh, – because I was going to say, if you're suspending the ARB clock on the other side, um, you don't gain pre-ARB or ARB in 2020, but that's kind of out the window. Player contracts yeah. compromise pay, but count towards a year of completion due to their age. So this is the other thing. With a salaried player, again, we'll use Stan as an example. Mm-hmm. We've just decided, though, we're saying he gets his full year of pay, not a not – a, 
Okay. And he also, this counts as a year on his contract in exchange for that. Correct. The yep. Yankees don't have to now back him up a year. Fine. That, I think, makes the most sense. Um, now, getting back to kind of what we were talking about before this, the actual flow of the season. Trade deadline. <laughs> it can't be July 31st anymore. That's no. More than the season. Um, I'm thinking August 31st. I think you just have to see what the – if we're talking 100 games, what the 50-game mark is and kind of find a date around that. Yeah, so, well... It might be a, you know... It's probably more like the two... September three. something, you know. Or that way. See, but everything affects value because, you know, now you're not getting players for yeah, I mean, you're that have, extra month, so... Like, that's the... You can't... This you can't prorate in my mind. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can, you the tra- trades, are, trades are definitely affected. Because July 31st is probably like 100-ish games into the season. So it's not the 50% mark. It's, it's more like closer to probably 60% mark. 60, yeah. So, But yeah, you do I mean, that, you're talking mind, about September, which is kind of what a team's going to pay for a guy for a month, month and a half, you know? Right. In my mind – Where they would two and a half, three. I think you have to combine the waiver and the trade deadline. Like I don't think those they got rid of they got rid of it. That's right. So that's already last year they got rid of it. Yeah, I would say yeah, maybe like August Mm fifteenth. You can't. I mean, August thirtieth, somewhere in August, I think makes the most sense. Um, Yeah, you can't go into September. It would. I mean, the trade deadline would be bonkers. By the way, it's your only shot (laughs) to do anything in that span. I think. I think you'd see a lot of big ass trades. Yeah, and not a. It can't be a ton of value, right? Or, or teams in a, no, no. Big, yeah, big guys, weeks. The shit teams that hold on to good players for trade value, they're going to get crapped on. Yeah. Cleveland won't get anything for Clevenger or, or what they think they would. Um, who else is good trade bait? Lindor. Um, I, I, wonder, yes, a, I wonder if rentals would be phased out in a hypothetical trade deadline. Like, would they just not trade rentals knowing they won't, they'll get pennies on the dollar? No, because they're still better off getting something than nothing. Tell that to the Mets last year. <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't, I don't. <laughs> what, uh, they, they do things that were, you know, I, I guess Brody thought they were, they were really in it. Uh, you know, who knows? So we're seeing it, it does. It does set them up nicely for this year, though. Yeah. It does. And Brian, I agree with you. I'm sure Henry does too. He's saying the owners in MLBPA need to make some good faith changes to try to get as much baseball this year as they can. Um, Absolutely. This is, this is something I had brought up earlier in the week. Um, they need to start negotiating now, <laughs> like in general, yeah. not only for this season, but also I think for the CBA. But, because here's the, wor- here's the doomsday scenario. You don't have a season in 2020, and that already puts the sport in a very bad place and then you play 2021 and then you have a work stoppage that just that That would would, be the work that could kill the sport absolutely yeah revenues will go down tv deals will be tanked forget it so in my mind not only are you negotiating right now while no one's doing anything you're negotiating right now for this season to as as we go on what are the different stipulations and also for beyond i mean we've had labor peace for so long you think with the amount of money that's being made, that they can find uh, some common ground. I don't think they'll be acting like Democratic and Republican senators trying to get a, you know, an emergency bill passed. But um, Manfred strikes me as the kind of asshole who like wouldn't, you know. I think Tony Clark is an asshole too. What's that? I think Tony Clark is just as much of an asshole. You know, yeah, this I isn't mean, Don yeah. Fear and and you know, and Sealy. You have to be to a degree, especially I think the players union guy really has to be an asshole because they'll get run over otherwise. But Manford strikes me as a type of commissioner who is more willing to just have a work stoppage in the name of what he believes than to actually so, do the right thing. Here's the thing. Manford is taking a beating yeah. the last two seasons, a be- an absolute beating. Now, let's be real. Manfred also doesn't do the negotiating. He's just the face of the owners. The owners do the real negotiating. So I can see a situation where they they hold, you know, steadfast on the line and, and make him the uh, the guinea pig. And if they don't like it, they fire him. 
When's the last time that happened? Good question. I don't know. Somebody, <laughs> hit, like the Google, know somebody hit the Google right. machine. Somebody uh, hit the Google machine. Yeah, somebody who is listening right now, please tell us the last time a commissioner was voted out. So they didn't leave voluntarily either for health reasons or retirement or whatever. Then they actually got voted out because they sucked prim primarily, which is the route Rob Manfred's going if we have any sort of work stoppage in the next two years. Randy is uh, making a comment on the... Uh... Yeah, so well, <laughs> let's get you. You got these two baseball life banners back there. No one's ever I seen do. before with the logo we just unveiled like last month. I do. I love it. I Where do. I could not. From... <laughs> I had them custom made. I had them custom made. I could not decide if I wanted to go with the color one or the black and white one. And the black and white one, I think I like a little bit more. So I just ordered both and, you know, it'll be a nice little piece to have in the background here as we expand our brand. I had to come back to that decision because today I'm wearing my major league shirt um, in honor of discussing baseball. So I kind of lean towards that red and blue one today, but I do, I think the black one is going to uh, have a better shelf life. I think the the red, white, and blue one is a good one to uh, break out and, and, and have, you know, as the, the banner page, uh, you know, Memorial Day, July yeah. 4th. That's, that's a good one. Opening day, you know, you have the opening day, the, the bun thing. And the when we have special Dong City podcasts, I want that red, white, and blue one out. <laughs> the, I agree. The other ones, we can do the black and white. And who knows? Maybe we'll fucking mass produce a bunch of them and sell them. I don't know. Yeah, that would be sweet. I, and, you know, that along with my Bronx Bang Bros 2018 Baseball Life Championship <laughs> banner is a nice one. I, I do have to make some changes, though. They didn't, didn't come with any Ilex, you know, the little uh, Ilex for the ropes. So I got to, you know, play with that a little bit. But I, I, I liked how they came out. Yeah, he's on the ball. He's, he's got it. William Eckert, 1968, was forced to resign. Uh, in so many words, because he sucked, which again is the route Rob Manfred's going right now. The suck. Yeah. I don't get the Ray Melendez comment from Randy. I need context there, but oh, and Jacob, you added too. So props to both of you. Thank you for looking. They both had it at the same time too. Yeah, that's right. So all right, so the the suck barometer is at William Eckert. I'd say Rob Manfred's like right about here. He's teetering. This he's close, man. What's it, season three he's going into as a commissioner? Four? Another good four, question. Right? I think it's I think it's four. It's always longer than I think. <laughs> nice Dong City reference. Um, <laughs> so I think it's four. You know, Rob Manfred's first, like, couple of years, I thought he was great. He a little quickly I got rid of I mean – Stupid home you know, it's all star thing. It's almost like you inherit something that's doing well, <laughs> and you know it, it's going well for a while, and then you fuck it up. Right. Some might be able to say like, Rob Manfred is like the coronavirus because he has just destroyed what was our someone great else baseball economy, or someone else. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm with you. I like that. I like that analogy. So, um, yes. Oh, yeah. Not a hold fan on. Of Brian's comment. Brian said he typed in when was the last MLB commissioner to be removed. The most common response was, "Is it time to remove Rob Manfred?" Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and this, yeah. So January twenty fifth, twenty fifteen, he was sworn in, which so is again for his fifth. So he has been four years. Five, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Man, that, I mean, this has just asshole. enough to sink the Titanic. He got the 2016 season uh, as a second season. All right, I get a little yeah. if he if his first season as baseball commissioner was the Cubs winning the World Series and he's as shitty as he is, I would like he might be my least favorite person on the planet. He's he seems to drop every ball possible. Yeah, just like Clint Frazier. Hmm. So let's see here. Um, red herring alone. <laughs> um. All right, so we, we're generally in agreement then. Early July-ish is the, the cutoff yeah. date, or else you've got no season, at least no season where there's a World Series champion. 
Um, maybe you have some sort of alternate bracket champion. We agree that uh, you have to play players prorated according to their their service time, whether pre arb arb or salary. Or no salary, we they have to get their full salary because yes. the games matter just as much pre arb and arb. We're going to prorate. Which is, yeah, all of that's fair. Um, I'm trying to scroll through the comments because I know these guys wanted to talk about some things, but I can't seem to scroll through. I know they wanted to talk about someone once said who has the best curveball in the game or something like that. No, it was Matt loving Barry Zito's 12 to 6 curve. Which, by the way, do you watch The Masked Singer? I've heard rumors he's on that. I haven't seen anything past. Who was the unveiling? Gronk was still on it, which, who I assume was Gronk, which everyone knows was Gronk, but. Yeah, is he? I I only come in and out because it, until recently I was playing softball on that night, so I would miss most of the episodes. I can't remember. Gronk is so obvious, but has he actually been unveiled yet? I don't know, but that's horribly obvious. I mean, he's terrible. <laughs> the only thing more terrible is the fact that he hasn't been voted off yet. That's what I'm saying. He was he is awful and does awful songs to try and hide his awfulness, and I'm, he's still there. I'm trying to – it's when they unveiled Shaka Khan. That was the last one I saw. All right, yeah, that's, that's like a few of them. Um, Bella Stone was the last one. Thank you, Jake. See, this is why we need comment interaction during these because they keep us in our place. Um, all right, so now here's the other thing to discuss. Back in 94, right, last time we had anything specifically baseball-related that's somewhat compared to this situation – uh, we used wide rampant, like horse caliber steroids to bring ratings back yeah. after that and got rid of the replacement players, except Kevin Millar. What's so, the, I'm almost, man, as, man, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm going to say, I'm almost as intrigued about this to think about 2021 and 2022 as I am to see if there's even a season this year, because there has to be changes and there's going to have to be like ratings lightning rods and i'm wondering what that looks like manfred can't even get his scandals right at least he had had steroids then a strike (laughs) manfred had the cheating scandal then maybe no baseball so he can't even get that right if it was the other way around and you know might have been easier for him yeah yeah and still no red sox punishment so he's just waiting like if there's yeah seriously first thing he has to do is make it shitty again by having us talk about that it's been like, what, four weeks since we should have gotten something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we haven't even heard that update. Now the we, excuse is that they'd have to discuss this, which, I mean, is plausible, but, like, what what is going on with that investigation? I don't know. Chris Sale getting Tommy John, I, I feel like they'll almost use it as like, oh, well, they got punished enough. This is, what, gun. This is what I think of that shit. I don't know how good these are, but these are supposed to be the N95. I don't know if that's any good. Wait, you need John Keating to see. Yeah, he's got those. He's got gas masks. masks. World War Z shit. Yeah, he looks like Bane, um, which is awesome. Yeah, so. For you, the people. I don't know. Gun to my I don't think there's going to be a season. You don't think so? I don't think so. I was on team season, like, weeks ago, but I just – now, especially seeing the way that the country's responding. Well, <laughs> dude, it's, it's, we get something, we take a step back every day. Yeah. Yeah. Literally every day we take a step back. So here's my conspiracy theory. These morons who are, uh, whatever the generation is under us, I guess it's Z for lack of a better term. Generation Z. Yeah. The ones who don't watch baseball are going to ruin baseball season by not quarantining properly. The assholes at, at Clearwater Beach and Miami Beach, those assholes? Yes, them. Jesus Christ. Nine, last I checked, nine viruses just out of Clearwater Beach from that gathering. Only nine. That should, should be 900. It, I think it's probably in the teens at this point. I haven't checked recently. But Florida is very hard to keep track of when it comes to things like this because there's... Bugs Bunny saw. Bugs Bunny saw. <laughs> if you are in daily life, I complimented DeSantis like a week ago. 
Um, I take that back. How? Because, He's know, fucking up royally. How? Yeah, no, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we we just closed our public beaches today, but they could still have the private beaches open. Stupid. And we're not under any sort of quarantine yet, although it's been rumored. Um, it's just crazy. It's crazy because there's so many people in the state. Like, we're like a Texas, California, New York, but not no, we, acting that we way. Have, we have 100% of non-essential personnel to stay home. Yeah. So I deal in real estate as well as finance and our company has some big tenants and they were closed. Checkers was closed. Starbucks was closed, which you close a Starbucks in New York city. That's like death. I think they closed um, all around the country. Probably. Um, AT&T was closed. We have a few checkers. Um, city MD was open, obviously. Um, yeah. All of our retail tenants were closed. Office tenants were closed and the streets were empty. I mean, I, I think we're going to get to a point where we just have a national shutdown of like a week or two. I, I, yeah, I think it's headed that way. As it is, I already have to go to my second Publix now, which is. I'm like, waiting for them to. I'm waiting for them to push it to you know voting season and say, well, we can't have a vote this year. <laughs> it, it, it's coming. There, you, baseball's not and the. Trump only. just gonna. Trump is gonna pull some Bloomberg shit. Like, let me sign this one-time law. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, anyway, to recap. Yes, correct. Leon, Leon is correct. The only Starbucks that are open are the ones with drive through access. Thank you, Leon. That may, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so no, to this is totally off script. Wait, this is totally off script. Yeah. I did the baseball, bo- um, the basketball podcast with Leon and Jacob Saturday. And so, we got into basketball movies. And we had a blast talking about basketball movies. And it made me think they're far more better basketball movies than there are baseball movies i don't know about that that's a discussion we can have right now what uh well what did you you decided hoosiers was number one i think i was tuning in uh, yeah we we ranked hoosiers at number one my personal would have been uh coach carter but yeah hoosiers which i don't think you can go wrong i'm also yeah i mean i think that's number one but i'm not crazy about that movie so i can understand if a coach carter should be number one but going to baseball Oh, there's so many more baseball movies, though. Like, are you in quality? There's more baseball movies, but I don't think there's quality. There's a lot of quality basketball movies. Well, kind of has to be because it's such a small, like, dinky. I don't know. I, I it's so hard to compare them. What would you have as your number one baseball movie? Field of Dreams is the Hoosiers of baseball. Yeah, Field of Dreams, but then, you know, you have, like, Major League, which is, you know, even though it's a comedy, it's, like, up there in the goats. Um, I I enjoyed Moneyball. When Jake and I and and Ben uh, were doing Stall Talk, we, I think Major League actually won the baseball bracket. We did okay. a baseball bracket. So you're not alone in that. It has a very, very I mean, following. There's a few great movies. The Natural, um, The Sandlot would have to be there. I think Sandlot would do very well if you were um, making a poll. Yeah. Another Donk City reference. I, I think we need to uh, research this and maybe have this somewhere, you know, for a future show. Fine. We can tease it that way. Uh, what are, Felipe says a league of their own would annihilate any basketball movie. It, I mean, he's not, as far as, like, the quality of a movie goes, I think he's right. Yeah, but, you know, he's got coronavirus now. For the record, going back to that, I like Eddie. I, I enjoyed that movie. No, stop. Yeah, I did. It was horrible. Again, right. like I said it's on the show. a bad movie, but I liked it. Right, that's what I said on the show. It's a horrible movie, but I'm right. going to always watch it. Yeah, it's like the sixth man. I bet I watched that class. I watched that in class with a substitute teacher one day. It's the only time I've ever seen it. And I was like, this is great. There's a way better. Like stuff. I said on the show, it's something that I could see Dolan doing, man. I could see him doing that. Whole Eddie shit. I could see Dolan yeah, doing it. Absolutely. It's a realistic plot. What would the what would the Yankee <laughs> equivalent of that be? Billy Crystal. Yeah. Well, we have sixty one, but that doesn't doesn't touch the mark like what i guess it would be what he like buys the most expensive player ever and he gets hurt like i don't, I don't know what that plot line would yeah. look like i don't know but 
I what are you it. doing in this quarantine instead of baseball? Like, what's your baseball fix right now at home? Uh, Jaden and I are looking at old 49er highlights from this past season, which just dagger. Um, we're playing Boggle, Family Boggle, you know, a few board games, Jenga. Um, I'm still doing taxes, and a lot of people are sending me their taxes, so I have a shitload of taxes, so. You got time to spread it out now, though, right? Um, yes and no. A lot of people want their money, so, you know, they want the return process. Those who, you know, who are going to owe, they eh, take your time. <laughs> but those, those getting a refund, they want their money, especially now. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the scout. I'm trying to think now of <laughs> they keep naming baseball movies. I'm trying to think of um, are we gonna have to jump into this now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it, do we have enough people on right now? We don't have a whole ton left to talk about anyway. So okay, let's go. Um, Does let's Bruce's go Millions with... count as a baseball movie? What's that? Someone commented Brewster's Millions. Would that count as a baseball movie? I don't even know what that is. So to answer your question, Ricky. Yes, you do. You, we, we had this conversation before, the movie with Richard Pryor. I think he's, he's given a million dollars and he can't spend it on himself or his family. Oh, well, I've had that hypothetical. I've never seen the movie, though. Yeah, yeah. That's what that is. Um, there's a cart. There's an animated movie, and I can't remember the name. My son used to watch that shit over and over again. It's about Babe Ruth, the bat talks, the ball talks. I know what you're talking about. I've never seen it, but I know what you're talking about. I love that movie. He made me watch that shit so much when he was. It was that in The Incredibles. Have you seen any of like the super old like uh, Pinstripe Power or or It Happens Every Spring like those types of movies? That's no. Like, I mean, these are like fifty year old movies, baseball movies. Um, those are really good, especially It Happens like, Every like, Spring. Good, like watching the old school home run derby. Good or like good, like. It's a, it'll give you a baseball fix. Like it happens every spring, for example, is a scientist who accidentally discovers a substance that's repellent to wood. So he ends up becoming a major league pitcher for the Cardinals and tries to lead them to the pennant because when he throws, if you swing at it, it just moves and you can't hmm. make contact with it. And then obviously there's variables that come into play. Sounds Let me terrible. try to make a call live on the air. Hold on. Okay. Jay. Yeah. What's the name of that baseball movie you were obsessed with when you were a kid? The Babe Everyone's Ruth. Hero? Everyone's Hero. There you go. There you go. All right. Later. Right, later. Throw that in the mix. The little big go. League Rookie of the Year, uh, Angels in the Outfield. The, uh, the 90s in the outfield, was great yeah. for, for... Little Big League, yeah. Yeah. What was it, out of those three, which one do you prefer? I think I'm a Angel. I'm definitely an Angels in the Outfield guy. Out of Angels those. in the Outfield, yeah. I mean, it's about Mike Trout, isn't it? <laughs> Oddly, despite the fact that Angels in the Outfield and Rookie of the Year and Major League, I love all three of those movies. I never, ever rooted for the Indians, Cubs, or Angels. <laughs> no. Or Little Big League with the Twins, for you know, adding on to that. What would be the Little Giants version in a baseball movie, I guess? What would that, I mean, the Sandlot, maybe? Sandlot, I, yeah. Yeah. Right? The Little Giants was a, this, there's a football one here, too. The Little Giants, man. The annexation of Puerto Rico. That was a great movie because the Giants win. <laughs> was, I, I was very into that movie just for the Giants-Cowboys subplot. Uh, Mr. 3000. Mr. 3000, yes. Leon, I'll have you know. Cute movie. Wasn't great, but it was cute. Uh, I don't know what Ace of Spades is. Neither do I. So you got me there. Uh, Ace of Diamonds. It would be Felipe with the weird reference that no one gets. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen For the Love of the Game? This I always confuse. Is that sounds the, familiar? Is that the other Kevin Costner movie where he's a pitcher? Yes. Okay, I have seen that. Then Sh Sugar was pretty good. Did you see Sugar? No. Sugar was very good. You Put that on your 42? list. I feel like that's huh? right up your alley. Forty-two. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, that's like required reading. <laughs> yeah, come on. Is there a Clemente that's what, movie? We need a Clemente movie, goddammit. Yeah, that would be a good one. I mean, they did it for Richie Valens. So like the same let, Fran let Francisco Lindor play him. That would be good. I am, by the way, like the Space Jam um, structure 
I am all about, I don't know why baseball doesn't do that. Have a movie with actual baseball players as the actors. Hello. Especially right now. You can just start filming. There's there's so many players. You have Aaron Judge, then you have Mookie Betts. Then you have like Altuve. You know, it's (laughs) like, there's so many stars right now that you could market in a movie like that. Oh my God. Ace of Diamonds in Japanese anime. See what I mean? Not even Bukaki. (laughs) I mean, not, not, even, even, a, not even a hentai is what I meant to say. We need we need a Roberto Clemente movie, and, and I'm on board with you. We need an animated movie with I mean, actual... The movie would be great. I'm trying to think who could play Roberto. I, w- I would love it to be a player, but you don't want them to fuck it up, so you may need a really good actor. He may, Yeah, he may be a little too royalty to, uh, to do that. Oh, you know what you can do? You can have Lindor be his body double on like the baseball plays. Now you got me. That's not bad. Now you got me thinking of current players. Who do you want to see a movie about? Current players? Yeah. They can't. And don't tell me Mike Trout because that would be the most boring, no. shitty movie ever. Bryce Harper. I, I don't. I think Bryce Harper, and it's not even close. You want to know about his Mormon upbringing and JUCO? Dude, league? you you talking about a kid that grew up a Mormon? You talk about a kid that was on the cover of Sports Illustrated as a high school player, went to a yeah. junior college. And, I mean, come on. You know, all the hate aside, um, Bryce Harper would be it for me. Um, I think, I think Steven Strasburg's pretty good, too. I was going to say Todd Frazier's a, a sleeper pick I'll throw in there, uh, winning the Little League World Series with Tom's River. And then making that would be the cool. majors, the whole Derek Jeter connection. Um That'd be it. That's a, that's a good one. You know who, yo, Barto- Bartolo Colon. He would have a great oh, yeah. fucking movie. <laughs> well, yeah, this other thing, too. Uh, and this Hold on. Is- who would you guys like to see? Give me current players you think would have a good movie. Yeah, let me know. Uh, other current players you, you would like to see in a movie. The thing that's been going around baseball life with the two Yankee players from the 70s who, s- who switch wives. Who swapped wives, yeah. That's a, that's a porn remake at, the, at worst. <laughs> Dirk Diggler in the, in the take. I mean, I right, we're in. A I bet you no player would do that with Aaron Judge in, in someone's head. Dude, no, no player would do that with Aaron Judge right now. <laughs> Aaron Judge. Uh, I don't think Judge is there. I'm. I'm not really that interested in the movie. He's adopted. No, That's- no, not movie wise. I'm talking swapping wives. Oh yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Um, um, movies. Yadier Molina would have a good movie with his dad and his brothers. I mean, that would be pretty damn good. That would be good. Aaron Boone, um, pretty interesting. Fuck you. Growing up in a baseball family, you hit um, a home run, you become an incompetent manager for the biggest team in sports. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good plot line. Current players. Thinking of guys maybe on their way out. Buster Posey would be good. What about like a Pujols? I would love a Pujols movie. I don't think I would. Absolutely love. <laughs> Just, yeah, and you have to show the Brad Lidge career killer moment. Oh, uh, well, you, that's mandatory. Off the fucking track, you know. Is uh, there anything interesting about Pujols, though? Like, Miguel Cabrera, to me, is more interesting than Pujols. No, Miguel, uh, Albert Pujols are pretty interesting. I mean, he has a daughter with, uh, I believe, Down syndrome. He does a lot of work um, in that field. You know, Pujols is pretty cool. Fine. Uh-huh. And he was like the best player of a generation since you know. Now we have Trout, but it's true. Miguel Cabrera would be a good movie. Just make sure you show Gary Sanchez punching him in his face. Um, I'm trying to. I think here's another one, and this is a little Yankee. Don't say Verlander. I'm not. I oh. actually Garrett Cole. Not because his. I mean, his personality is super boring, but his. Betting on himself and returning back to baseball. Interesting plot line. Playing for the shit. Oh, that is. Parents. Interesting plot line. I got it. 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 Clevenger and Bauer in a remake of How High. Oh, yeah. That's it right there. Yep. That's it right Trevor there. Bauer that's that's and, it right there. And they can play themselves. Yes. That's it <laughs> yeah. right there. How High. Have them go on Mike Tyson's podcast with smoking weed. That's it right there. <laughs> By the way, another, the one, more, one more recommendation for those of you starving for baseball. Go listen to Trevor Bauer as a guest on Pardon My Take, of all places. 
nice 17 minute interview there. It was right after the Astros scandal broke. Um, getting out. his perspective. Send me a link offline. What's that? Send me a link offline. Yeah, I will. Yeah, it's getting yeah, his I've, perspective in a non tweet form. I've been uh, big on two podcasts, that being the Mike Tyson podcast, Hot Boxing, mm-hmm. which is phenomenal. Mike Tyson is about as raw as you can get. And uh, Drink Champs, with, which is more of a hip hop themed um, yeah, podcast, which is pretty right. badass. Mm-hmm. That's with Noriega. He has some amazing ass guests. But yeah, um, like Mike Tyson's that, podcast. Huh? Is it like within that field or like just... In yeah, he had, he's had like guys go on there and he makes them so comfortable that they just start telling stories, shit that you never heard of. That's cool. Um, I think he had Nas on one time and he asked Nas about meeting Prince and Nas goes into the story about wanting to work with Prince and Prince's first question to Nas was, do you own your own masters? <laughs> and Nas, Nas, they looked around like, who the fuck this guy thinks he is? And he said, inside his ego was like, no, I don't. I don't own my own master. <laughs> but this is Nas. This is like hip hop royalty talking about, you know, being undressed by Prince. It's pretty cool. And he has a lot of guests there. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty good podcast. Um, L Tran. Uh, L Tran would be a good documentary. That's a good one. Especially when you remember his stories about when he first came to America and only like knew how to order a hamburger or something. Ooh, <laughs> you know, you know what would be a tearjerker? Jose Fernandez. Yeah, I'm not watching that. That would be an absolute tearjerker. I would rather can... watch the Marlins now than watch. That would be something that would just everyone would leave the theater in tears. Yeah. No, I mean, you you throw the grandmother that. story, you you put the grandmother story in there, you do all that. And... That falls into the animals dying in movie category for me. I'm not against you making that movie. I'm just <laughs> never going to watch it, ever. <laughs> Leon said Verlander just for Kate Upton. Yeah, well, does that as include as the as fappening? It... Because you have to include the fappening in that plot line. Kate Upton from the waist up. Kate Upton from the waist down is like ugh. legs. <laughs> uh, everything, dude. She has no hips. She has no legs. She has no ass. She has nothing. That's true. Um, Beltran's a good one. Verlander, I don't really care about. Granderson. Uh, Granderson would be a fun one. But like what? Um. Why am I forgetting his name? Pittsburgh traded Yankees. Gary Cole. McCutcheon. McCutcheon would be a good one. Andrew McCutcheon would be a good one. I'm intrigued by former Pirate players because to me it's kind of like the anti-money ball. You played for a shitty franchise and they didn't have their shit together. Yep. I want to know what that's like when you then join a competent team or you go from a competent team and you'd like die with the Pirates. He's not an active player, but yeah, Ichiro would be a good one. That would be a damn yeah, good a very one. good one, yeah. Way better than Pete Rose. I know someone's going to say it eventually. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Actually, that would be an interesting movie, but I still don't want it. Like, he hasn't. Each, I think Ichiro would be a great one. That would be good. I want to know what he says in those all star game locker rooms. It's one of baseball's mysteries. Fucking Felipe Andy Vance, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Joe McEwing. I want a movie about him. Give me a Super Joe. Super Joe. Pinch hitters. Um, man. Well, we're gonna need pinch hitters for the show soon if we don't wrap it up. Because at this yeah. point, I think we've exhausted. Anyway, thank you for joining us. This went in a direction we didn't expect, but it was still fun. Um, it was always fun. So yeah, I mean, we'll see if there's a baseball season. We intend, uh, you know, as you can tell, there's plenty of hypotheticals now we can kind of discuss. So we will. Are you good for three thirty? I am. All right. We'll be back. And we'll leave it up to the fans to talk about what we want to talk about. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to hound you guys this week to talk about topics. You want to talk about movies again? That's fine. You want to talk about uh, schedules or, um, you know, league realignment? That's fine too. You want to talk about the Red Sox and why they're screwed for the next century? That's fine too. Um, You guys let us know. You want to talk about longest dongs has been has been recommended a few times now. We can we can have an absolutely at least have a segment on 
very long home runs. I know my favorite story when it comes to that. Um, so yeah, so we will be back 3.30, uh, hopefully with some sort of update from baseball that is positive, unlike what we got today, which is that the Yankees are likely closing their facility, and I'm sure that's impacting other teams in other parts of the country as well. Um, so that's it. Thank you for uh, joining us here over on Dong City, and uh, we will be back to you next week. Dong City, bitches.